Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are going over my top five destroyers, which was requested in several forums in last week's top five video. So if you guys want to potentially see your idea become next week's top five video, leave it in the comments down below. Like I said, several of you asked me to do some form of top five destroyers, so here we are today. Also, up here at the front, too, we are getting very close to 40,000 subscribers. We are under 500 subs away from that goal, which is awesome. When we do hit that goal, we will be doing the 40,000 subscriber giveaway, which is very similar to previous uh, milestone giveaways in the past. So, if you want to get that giveaway going as soon as possible, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have notifications turned on. Alright, so... One last thing before we get into the list, again, this is my top five destroyers. I'm not saying these are the best of the best. I'm not saying these are destroyers that you can pick up and instantly win every single game in. Nope, these are my top five destroyers. And you'll see, I, I do certainly have a, a particular type when it comes to destroyers. So it's all my opinion, 120 25% my opinion. So do keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and get started with number five, which is the Soviet Tier 10 destroyer, the Kabarovsk, which used to be a tech line ship, was removed, and is now a freemium ship available for coal. Uh, what was really cool about the Kaba is that if you had her tech line version before she was booted out of the of the tech line, you now have her premium version as well, which is, if you enjoy Kaba like I do, great, because now she costs way less to run and is better at earning credits. So yeah, Kaba, 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 Kaba. She is so much fun. However, she has quite a few shortcomings, which is why she's back at number five for me. So Kabaros used to be probably one of the most feared destroyers in game. Why? Because she was for a very long time the fastest DD and very much the most annoying DD to deal with. She used to be able to get her range out to what several other gunboats can get their range out to now. Well, running gunboats. Kabarosk is a running gun destroyer. By that, I mean you smack W down, you don't care about your concealment, you keep firing all the time, you try to get on the flanks of the enemy team and just outrun their shells or outmaneuver their shells as they try to hit you. You use your good guns with the, their excellent, excellent velocity to great effect. Now, that, that's the Kaba's strength is distance. Her shells are, of course, Soviet shells, which means they, they are flying out of the barrels. So over range, it's very easy for the Kabaros to land good, consistent shots with her HE and both her AP. So the further away you are from the target, you're moving faster, makes the return fire very difficult for the enemy ships to do since you're so far away and you're moving so fast. Especially if you're in an American battleship and you have to fight one of these things back in the day, back when she could get her main battery gun range out to around 15 kilometers. Good freaking luck trying to hit her. However, not all went well with the Kalharosk. Because she was so fearsome, she was eventually hit hard with the nerf bat over time. Uh, the first major nerf was to her range. Now you can only get out to a maximum of around 13 kilometers, which isn't great. Now, at 15 kilometers, most shells don't really have the velocity to hit you, especially back in the day when there was no Soviet BBs, there weren't any of the super cruisers or a lot of the hyper velocity guns that we're getting in the game today. It was darn hard to deal with the Kabaros because they could just outrun everything and then once they murder all the DDs, they just drive circles around your ships, burning you over and over and over again. But anyway, so they nerfed the range. And then she didn't for a very long time, didn't get the updated Battleship BB uh, AP versus Battleship BB, <laughs> Battleship AP versus DD um, formula where she was still eating one third of Battleship AP damage when ba Battleship AP would hit because it was ruled she was a large cruiser. And she does have a lo lot of health, truthfully. But I mean, all these other DDs just got this straight up buff where they only eat 10% of the Battleship's AP maximum damage and then Kaba's over here still eating a third. But I say recently, but was, I think it was about a year or two ago, they finally gave her the updated 10% AP um, formula to now where she doesn't just get dumpstered by Battleship AP compared to other DDs. So that helped. Her range is still very short, 
But hey, she's still a fun boat for me. She's got that speed boost. She's a very fast boat. Can't really maneuver that well. But I mean, when you can accelerate and decelerate on a dime, it's it's pretty good. And she does still get the heal too. You have your choice of heal or smoke. If you choose smoke in Akaba, uh, you're playing the wrong ship, sir. Definitely want to pick up that heal. Her AP is very fearsome too. Her AP is actually sap. She had sap before it was cool, so that's fun. So it's great dealing with uh, lighter armored targets and the like. So, yeah, very fun ship. One of my personal favorites, but yes, has quite a few shortcomings nowadays, which is why she's at number five. All right, moving on down to number four, we have the tier nine premium Italian destroyer, the Paolo Emilio. Ah, yes. The YOLO Emilio. What would one of my top five DDs list be without Paulo? Paulo is a one-trick pony, but it's a really good trick. <laughs> so what Paulo has is, well, she has speed, exhaust smoke, and nuclear-tipped torpedoes <laughs> that do not have a lot of range. Now, um, Paulo isn't really a formula for the current Italian DDs. I mean, I can see how they kind of took some of the ideas from her and gave them to the Italian DDs with like the slower firing guns that fire sap. Sure, but you can't play Italian DDs like you play Paolo. Because Paolo is a torpedo delivery system. Her thing is, she has smoke, exhaust smoke that is just long enough to cover her concealment range to the target with her speed boost and it lasts just that long literally you pop the exhaust smoke right at the edge of 7.2 kilometers and with your speed boost you will cover the distance to the enemy ship with about so oh, two seconds left on your smoke if that and then you deliver your nuclear tipped torpedoes to the enemy ship and these torpedoes have like shimikaze alpha on them she gets three sets of four which is just enough to essentially kill one tier 9 battleship per torpedo rack. So that does mean you can potentially sink three tier 9 battleships in one run. I've done that before. It's hilarious. And you get you, you might think, well, Sealer, to switch radar and hydro at tier 9 and 10 now, how does that possibly work? You will be surprised how many people ignore the 60 knot smokescreen charging at them until they get proximity detected by a destroyer. You would be surprised. So she's a fun trick, but I mean, it is a research bureau ship. You do have to regrind lines to get it, but the giggle value is immense, and not every game you're going to pull this off successfully. It takes time to get good at singling out the targets. If there's any other DDs in the way, you're probably not going to have a good time. So you got to find that one or two battleship that's out by themselves that don't have any destroyers or, or uh, cruisers near them, and even sometimes two. They might be there, they might not just be spotted, so you gotta get good at improvising and uh, having a backup to your backup to your backup planes. But yes, a fun boat with a nice trick that you can get to work kinda well with practice. Alright, going on down to number 3, we have the Tier 8 Premium American Destroyer, the Kid. So, the Kid is probably one of the best destroyers for someone that's just starting to grind up a, a, a destroyer line, particularly the American destroyers, and they need something to train their commanders or maybe practice on that's a little bit forgiving. The Kid is definitely your ticket there. What the Kid is, is a Fletcher, which is the Tier 9 Techline American Destroyer, down tier to Tier 8 at the cost of her Fletcher torpedoes and a torpedo mount, but she gets more AA, she gets a heal, she gets the American smoke, which is all quite nice. And she gets, um, I believe, Benson torpedoes. They have a very long reload time and only roughly an 8 kilometer range, but you do get more AA. Kid, still today, is one of the best AA ships in the game. She is absolutely the last thing a, a destroyer, a carrier, wants to come across when they are seeking out their targets. You can easily make even tier 10 carriers weep. Even some of the super carriers, too, that aren't using the jets at this time. So, great AA, has that heal, and she's a Fletcher, which is a tier 9 destroyer at tier 8, with a heal. So, with the guns of the Fletcher, you can be just an excellent cap-contesting DD. You get the long duration American smoke, you get the heel, you get the Fletcher's guns, you I mean the torpedoes, they are Benson torpedoes, but they're still torpedoes. They're still quite good. They're still perfectly capable of denying the enemy 
entry into an area. Yes, they're only eight kilometers, but hey, that's you know roughly the size of a cap. So the way I have my kid built is for cap contesting. I have everything built into the DPM of the ship. Use a smoke screen, hide in that corner of the um, of the cap. Outgun the other DDs that, that might come across you. Keep in mind that this is a tier nine and a tier eight slot, so this can potentially see tier six destroyers. At which case, the kid absolutely just dumpsters them because again, it's a tier nine at a tier eight, and it gets a heal on top of that too. So you have a huge advantage over those lower tier destroyers. And when you do see tier eight and even tier ten destroyers, you are still again pretty much a tier nine destroyer with a heal, with you know some compromises here and there. So that's able to just help you be an excellent cap contesting DD and the kids are very good at that now playing this method of course you're not going to come out with a bunch of damage or anything like that because you're going to be fighting mostly other DDs so of course in most cases you aren't going to be any of the game with like 150 180,000 damage but you'll probably have one or two destroyers murdered which the game rewards you in um percentage of damage versus these ships overall HP so sure you don't have 200,000 damage done but it's three DDs worth of damage, which is exactly the same as if you sat there and burned out three battleships. So, yeah, you may not get any big, funny numbers, but hey, she's good at what she does. An excellent destroyer for players that are just getting into destroyers. Again, don't go buy this thing first before you even try um, playing destroyers. Do grind up the American line a bit, get used to playing destroyers, then pick up the ship. So again, an excellent ship. Real still historical ship, too. The ship is very close to where I live at, so it's always awesome getting to see these ships in game begin to go experience them in real life going on down to number two we have the other tier nine american premium destroyer the black so the black is the only way i think you could get an american destroyer to be an even better cap contester than the kid which is giving a fletcher a radar so that's essentially what the Black is. A Fletcher with a radar it has slightly different torpedoes. They are much longer range torpedoes, but they are slow. You can get them out to 13 kilometers. They're very slow, but they hit pretty darn hard, which is pretty nice for cap testing. You'd be surprised how many times you'll catch someone off guard with these torps. Slow torpedoes are sometimes the stealthiest ones, it seems. But anyway... So, the Black's radar goes out to 7.5 kilometers, which of course covers the entire cap, which means you can back into a cap, be sitting in one corner of the cap, and easily have the whole cap within radar. Second something touches the cap, pop your radar, you got their DD call it. You also still have the American smoke screen too, so you can smoke up, keep your radar going, and absolutely melt down the other destroyer, because again, you are a Fletcher, which is an excellent gunboat. So, just using that simple tactic, you'll be probably the king of the cap until you run into either another black or something like a small uh, uh, like a small end that also has radar so she's just a great cap contester she's returned she is one of the most expensive coal ships in the game she's tied with nushimi for uh the most expensive coal ship and she has a tier nine and it is a destroyer so that is something that does turn a lot of people off the fact that you do have to spend upwards of i think it's like two hundred ninety-five thousand coal for the black which is a lot of coal, but hey, it's a free ship. You can easily get that much coal in like three, four months just by getting your daily coal containers. And by, well, mm, <laughs> well, actually, no, with the battle pass coming, you will be earning a little bit more coal than normal. I was about to say by doing your daily combat missions and stuff, but the battle pass is getting rid of that. But that is one thing that we are actually gaining in the battle pass is more coal. So you will actually be able to get the ship a little bit faster with the new battle pass system. But of course, uh, participating in ranked and other events during the uh, the seasons that we go through and what warships, you will be able to pick up quite a bit of coal. So if you do that, you can shave that down to about two and a half months. And then, of course, when the coupon comes on cooldown, you get a nice 25% off to the price of the ship. So you can get the ship for a little bit cheaper than that. So just wait, save up your coal, save for the coupon. And you can get the black a little bit cheaper than that. Still going to cost about the same as a um, as a normal coal ship. So, yeah. But again, well worth it. Excellent cap contester. All the good stuff we mentioned about the kid, the American smoke, the guns. Um, those are still here on the black. You just don't get a heal, so you got to play the ship a little more cautiously. And you know, you don't have that heal to kind of brute force your way through those DD on DD gunfights. But she's still well worth it, in my opinion. Alright, going on down to number one, we have the tier 10 French destroyer, the Clabert. Now, I hear it already. Sea Lord, why not the Marceau? Well, you know, the Marceau, she's a Clabert with smaller 
a Kleber with smaller guns. And the shells are just a little bit too floaty for my taste. Like, the more so is an excellent destroyer. Definitely one I would recommend you pick up. But when I want to sit down and just play a destroyer for fun, I always pick the Kleber over the Marceau because she has the better shell ballistics. Yes, she has the bigger shells, and yes, they take longer to reload, but she's just a Kabaros that does everything better. And that's the truth. She plays pretty much exactly like the Kabaros. She's a run and gun destroyer. She has some excellent guns with excellent shell ballistics. And she has some fearsome AP along with some excellent HE. She's a very fast ship. Now, she doesn't get the heal that the Kabaros gets, but she does, does get the improved French DD damage saturation. For those of you that don't know how damage saturation works, uh, you can go into a training room and see a perfect example of this. I'll see it working perfectly well. Just go into a training room, load in, I don't know, a cruiser or something, sell up to it, blast it, and let's say it's bow. Note how much damage you get. Blast it a couple more times in the bow, and you'll see that it takes less damage. Because that part of the ship has become damage saturated. The hit points in World Warships, it's, it's not just a health bar. Where you can poke the ship one to, uh, a million times in the smokestack at the exact same amount of damage and sink the ship that way. You can sink the ship by shooting it in the same spot over and over and over again, but once the part becomes damage saturated, you're going to start to see a minimum number of hit points get removed from that part of the ship anymore. So yeah, sure, you can shoot it in the bow a million times and eventually kill it, but it's going to take you <laughs> a million shots. No, not literally a million. It's going to take you, obviously, a lot more, but not that many. I'm just exaggerating a little bit. But anyway, so with the French damage saturation, it works out to where, well, for the French destroyer damage saturation, I wish the French cruisers got this. That, that, <laughs> that would make them amazing. Um, they effectively take around half the amount of damage that most other DDs would in that situation. So their parts get damage saturated much faster. So they don't have a heal, but it pretty much makes up for it. In the, in the game watching the background, I live for a very long time. And in, in many cases, uh, in cases that I shouldn't have uh, necessarily survived, especially if I, was, if I was, would have been something like the, the Kabarosk. So she's faster than the Kabarosk. Her guns are... <sighs> I wouldn't say they're better. What makes them better is that the Cabaros, I'm sorry, that, that the Kleber does get the reload booster, the old French gimmick. So, this is what I like to call the I win button. Sure, the Kleber's guns have a reload above 5 seconds, which is very long for a tier 10 DD's reload to, to be. But, when you po poke the I win button, you now have like a 2.5 second base reload time. Then, of course, after you've taken some damage, you've done half health, you have an insanely fast reload time. So when it comes down to it, you're in a DD on DD fight, you pop that th you pop that guy, and you win the fight as long as you can aim decently well. And very similar to the Kabarosk as well, her AP is very fearsome. If you have a cruiser with uh, that's showing your broadside, go ahead and switch on to it, aim for its upper belt or its superstructure. You chunk the guy for like, 2k to 5k easily per salvo and then of course if you got one that keeps showing you their broadside pop it with ap and you'll absolutely melt that poor guy down quite easily so she does everything better than the capitalist does she's a tech line ship so she's completely free to grind and she's a ship i absolutely adore to play plus she has a 16 kilometer main battery gun range which is very similar to cava's old gun range so yeah <laughs> it's just a better Kabarosk. Uh which, you know, does hurt to say, but hey, it's a free ship, just one grind away from all of us, and is an excellent running gunboat, and my personal favorite destroyer in the game. Right, right behind Cab. If Cab would just give a little, a little, a little treat from Wargaming, you know. The Kabarosk can have some ranges of treat, right, Wargaming? Please? Please? But anyway, guys, that's my top five destroyers. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, as you can tell, I very much like gunboats. Very much like running gunboats as well. Uh, other than that, I do like the cap contesting gunboats, like, of course, the Kid and the Black as well. So, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 40,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Good guys, hope you guys have a great week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.